good evening and welcome to Cliffy Land Global Cooking Challenge tonight as we work or continue to work our way around the world learning to cook by cooking food from one country a uh, week in alphabetical order working from Afghanistan to Zimbabwe all 193 UN member states. Tonight we are on country and week number 173 of 193 and we're cooking, cooking the food of Togo. Uh, tonight we're cooking a grilled Togo chicken with a chenkume, which is a chicken meal patty of sorts. Uh, and uh, hi dad! Uh, so in case you're wondering where Togo is, Togo, and this is of all the 54 countries in Africa, more than any other, other continent. This is our very last one in West Africa. You just notice how there's so many. Uh, Togo is the very skinny country uh, stuck between uh, Ghana and Benin and Burkina Faso. It's a little skinny country right in there. Uh, so, uh, Emil, thank you for the like. So uh, let's sound and see if we can get our camera going. Hello there. And uh, we found some music of Togolese music, which uh, I expect most of it will be in French. So brush up on your French, everyone. Uh, do, do, do. How is everyone doing? I am uh, dehydrated. I just came back from another run. Uh, for the chicken, one second. Uh, said that it should be for like about 10. 10 pieces of chicken, which struck me as a bit much, because uh, there's only two, and one of the reasons we didn't cook, uh, have streams on Friday or Sunday this week, uh, was because uh, we had a big paella party for mom on um, Saturday, which involved me cooking all day. I did the paella I did from Spain, the, uh, the uh, mumu that I did for Papua New Guinea, it's the third time I've done it now for people, and uh, came on the uh, Mantu steam buns that I made for Singapore and the avocado salad that I made for Swaziland. So it was an all day affair of cooking. Uh, so that was, uh, anyone know anything about Togo? Togo is, uh, like I said, it's small, it's a narrow, narrow country. Um, you know what, here, I got my globe. I'll show you again since you probably missed it at the beginning. Uh, so you got Africa right there, big, big, the second biggest continent. And then you have uh, Nigeria is that, you know, big one there. And then you have Benin, the next one is the, the one, the skinny one with a little hat on top. And then the big one over here is Ghana and the skinny one in the middle, that's Togo with Bur Burkina Faso on top. So that right there is Togo. Uh, various tribes started arriving between the uh, 11th and 15th centuries from all directions. Um, Europeans started arriving in the 15th century and it became part of what is known as the Slave Coast, uh, where Europeans came to trade slaves and other goods. Uh, well, slaves are people, they're not goods, they were treated as goods. Um, the, uh, uh, the different Con uh, countries there. Hey Clifton, how are you doing? Uh, the different countries there in West Africa kind of got their names based on what was traded uh, in the different areas. It was like the Gold Coast and Ivory Coast, which is what Cote d'Ivoire uh, was, and then uh, so in the Slave Coast. So they had these different names. Uh, eh. um, so uh, um, Togo uh, became uh, a German protectorate in 18. 85, 84, sorry, 1884, onions. More on that in a moment. Uh, let me wash my hands and we're gonna get the uh, goods ready for our jenkome. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. French is sort of like the official language there, but we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, okay, we're gonna get two cups of cornmeal into a bowl. So cornmeal, I bought, oh, and you'll never, you'll never guess where my cornmeal is. I have it in the freezer. Anytime anything new comes in the house, grain-wise, it goes in the freezer overnight. Make sure there's no 
no baddies in there. Uh, hey, thank you very much for the follow, Savio. Um, and uh, who do we have here? Uh, EC, thank you for the like and the restream. So we have our cornmeal, and like I said, corn is the deal there. And uh, this is gonna be, the on this dish, there's gonna be lots of leftovers. The other one, there's supposed to be like 10 pieces. I only got two, and I feel kind of weird about that. We'll figure it out. Uh, but right now I need to get two cups of cornmeal going while we continue to yak about Togo. The people and things from Togo or Togolese. Uh, 1884, during the Scramble for Africa, and if you don't know about the Scramble for Africa, please, uh, you know, Google it, Wikipedia. Um, it's something everyone should know about, the history of this world. Um, it's uh, not something that I learned in school. Uh, so, uh, when the Europeans kind of decide to divvy up the continent in the late 1800s. If you're in the Western Hemisphere, you'd probably be surprised thinking that that would have happened earlier. It did not. Uh, so, um, the Germans took this part of the world and claimed it, and it was run as a German protectorate uh, from 1884 until World War I. End of World War I, Germans did not fare too well. So uh, their colony and many others, but this one went to the French. So the French controlled Togo uh, from the end of World War I until 1960. That is when they got their independence from France. Uh, then uh, things kind of went downhill, as they tend to do. Uh, we will take care of you later. So that is our cornmeal right there. Uh, now let's get our garlic cloves. We're gonna peel and crush four garlic cloves. So. 1967, uh, a coup, and I can't get the guy's name right, so I'm not going to attempt it, uh, became president and it ruled as a dictator from 1967 until his death in 2005, making him at the time of his death the longest ruling uh, leader, we'll say, in Africa. He ruled for 30 uh, three, four, five, 38 years. Am I doing my math right? Um, at the time, making him the longest ruling guy. Uh, and who gets to be president afterwards but his son. And his son is the president now. However, after lots of pressure and world changes and stuff, they're starting to move towards a multi-party democracy and trying to get that going. Uh, they had some elections in, I believe, 07, which uh, were considered, you know, generally fair. So uh, they're moving in the right direction. So there's that. Geographically, uh, they have the, uh, since they're, you saw that they're narrow and skinny, but they run from the uh, coast of the Atlantic, the Gulf of, I believe it's the Gulf of Guinea. I hope I'm not wrong on that. Um, but uh, the, uh, the Atlantic all the way up to uh, Burkina Faso. So because they're long and skinny like that, um, they uh, oddly uh, have six different environments that range from uh, the shores uh, to the savannas. Uh, and you get lots of different uh, um, environmental variety in a rather small nation, which is kind of interesting. So that is, in a nutshell, Togo. Togo, we'll go to Togo. To go? Uh, we're listening to King, Met King Mensa, uh, one of the more popular Togolese um, musicians. Talk to me, people. How's your week going? How is everybody doing? Kenneth, I've not seen you in a while. Hope things are going well for you. Way out in the wild, wild west. Things here have been nice. They've uh, they were they were cool and comfortable. I'm just kind of bummed that they got a little. Hey, Kenneth, thank you for liking the restream. Uh, things got uh, warm again here today, which boo. I've been enjoying having the windows open. 
How do you have to borrow a, a, a heater for the, our party on Saturday from a neighbor? I need to give it back. I haven't seen her. I've been looking out the window. Uh, she was, uh, I'm wondering if I could pay her back in leftovers. She was very excited that I made Thailand a few weeks ago. She was, she was like, oh, I could have had leftovers. I'm like, well, I didn't know. So, uh, there you go. Uh, great, just doing audiobooks. Oh, you're listening to audiobooks or you're recording audiobooks? Because it could be either. Um, myself, in high, uh, oddly enough, in high school, um, I tried to record an audiobook uh, as a volunteer thing. Um, my OCD got the better of me. I did not know that's what it was then at the time, though. Um, and I couldn't get past the first page. I had to keep recording it over and over again. So that's not right. That's not right. So I never got past the first page of War of the Worlds. Hey, Daddy! Thanks for the restream. Uh, for Crush. We're crushing the garlic cloves. Four of them. Smash. Hulk smash! Uh, I am grateful that I didn't really have to do too many dishes this week because, you know, party time. And I, I kind of wondered if I should even think about, um, streaming that, uh, on the weekend. But, you know, it was kind of calm to be able to cook without having to, you know, concentrate. So, uh, there's that. Garlic cloves smashed right here. So we have our uh, garlic and our cornmeal, and now we're going to grate some ginger. Let me uh, wash my hands here. Okie doke. Uh, what are we looking for? Ginger. We need one teaspoon of ginger. Thankfully, I think I have just about that much left. Uh, what do we got going here? Tammy, thank you for the restream. Hello, hello. Okay, so I'm looking for a teaspoon of garlic out of that. I think that's more than a teaspoon. Uh, Diana, hello, hello, hello. Thank you for the restream. So nice seeing everyone. I have missed everyone this week. Uh, though I did get to go out and have like a social life. So there's that. It's a little unusual. I had to go out to dinner on Friday. Sunshine in the his house. Betsy, do I see Betsy? Do I see Betsy? Where's my bets? Okay, uh, let's see now. One teaspoon, eh? How about you? I think that might be a teaspoon. Betsy, Carrie, everybody's here. Who we got here? Hello, hello, hello. Uh, Zusk. Hello, Zeus. How are you doing? Welcome. We are cooking the food of Togo, the African nation in West Africa. The capital is Lomé, on the coast, on the Atlantic coast of Africa. Uh, all the food in West Africa is, uh, I mean, it's regional, you know? Um, the countries are small. There's a variety of small countries, all kind of packed together, so their food is going to be somewhat similar. It's going to vary based on where you are in that country. So there's going to be more fish on the coast, um, more bush meat um, away from the coast. Um, one of the things that is eaten in Togo uh, in, in terms of bush meat, which is, you know, basically the animals you, you know, find out where you are. It's not like North America, they have a deer. Uh, get yourself a Japanese yakori charcoal grill. Wonderful for this dish. Yeah, but uh, yeah, grilling, not, not really my thing. Um, I've got the gas grill outside, and you know, there's like the, the world's most remote chance. Shenanigans, I'm supposed to grate this. Um, the, uh, but said you could roast it, and they are cheap. Yeah, but they need charcoal, and they'd have to be outside, and they need to burn things. Question marks, I don't know. Uh, hi Lydia, hi Tammy, Carrie, everyone, hello, 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 hello. Okay, grating. I should have been grating all along, so I'm going to grate now. I've got my microplane, which I like better. And I used this yesterday when I grated. Uh, I did not put this on the stream. Uh, Santos, hey Santos, thank you for liking the restream. Um, I did not stream yesterday when I made the marinade for the chicken, which is sitting in front of me. 
Um, incidentally, I thought of doing this for, you know, after I hit Zimbabwe. But I, who knows, I might do it earlier. Um, to do on Periscope, uh, I thought of Waxar. Hello, thank you for the like. Thank you, uh, a Sneed. Um, the uh, Periscope stream, when um, last week we had our disaster, uh, you may or may not have realized uh, that it wasn't just you. Um, the stream was going fine, we were chatting, everything was hunky-dory, and then everyone just stopped talking, and I said, something is wrong, I know I'm boring, but I'm not that boring. Um, and then I, I tried as myself to go in to the stream, uh, and I couldn't, and I realized that all of Meerkat was D-O-W-N down. Every last bit of it, and that was very upsetting. Because uh, that stream that I had, I couldn't save it either. So I switched over to Periscope, and... Um, uh, Lavender Femchi found me and one or two other people, but that's about it. Um, it was very nice of her to find me, and she tweeted out, "Hey, he's over here now." So that was uh, that was my backup plan. It was an emergency. It was, uh, however, it was um, you know nice to try the Periscope thing, even though the comments fly away. Um, but anyway, I'm thinking of um, doing the simultaneous stream with the uh, iPad launched, you know, or uh, mounted on a mount uh, over my head uh, on the fridge. I found a, a uh, an expensive mount for it and I could stream from the iPad and then you could see like, you know, this way. Of course, I wouldn't be able to see what people are commenting, but it would give the Periscope people a chance to see this too. Ginger. So, uh, what do you think about that? Good idea? Uh, that's ginger, we got garlic, and now we need an onion. Be right back. Gotta wash. Washy, washy, washy. Okay, where are we here? Uh, Anthony, thank you for the restream. So, uh, uh, onion. We are peeling and mincing uh, one onion. So this is onion number two. This one is the onion which is for the cornmeal dish, the genkome. D-J-E-N-K-O-U-M-E, genkome. And I believe this is from a Togolese website called, uh, or a website that has Togolese recipes. Uh, this one called Ethnic Foods Are Us. Well, let's hope this one's okay. It seems a little funky. We're gonna find out in a moment. Thankfully, I have more. How are we doing, Mr. Onion? Mmm, not so hot. Well, we won't use that part of it. It's a huge onion. My goodness. Uh, but the grilled chicken, um, uh, here's the deal. It's two, instead of ten, it's two chicken thighs, bone in, skin on, that I have. Uh, it said ten. You know, I did two. I used the same amount of the marinade. I'm figuring that won't be a problem. It's been sitting in there since, uh, since last night. This is funky. I'm not grooving on this onion, but it is huge. No. No. Let's lose most of this one. Yeah, that's not good. This is a big, big onion, so I don't care if I'm losing most of it. Ah, uh, bidi bidi. Hector, thank you for the like. So good seeing you. Thank you, my loyal friend. Um, but anyway, it says the chicken is to be grilled. Uh, it says uh, it needs to be browned, almost burnt on the outside. It's got the marinade. It's been sitting sitting in the marinade since yesterday. And um, it says it should be very brown and golden. And it says it would at 450 Fahrenheit. Uh, it should take about 30 to 35 minutes. Uh, I am I'm prepared to do that. I am nervous, though, that uh, were I to bite the bullet and just say, you know what, I'm going to do it on, I'm going to go out there at 
6.45, that'll be in 20 minutes, and, and uh, fire up the uh, gas grill, uh, would I want to do that? And uh, would it burn if I had it in there at the medium temperature for that long? Because I wouldn't be able to watch it. I'd be in here. That's another reason. It's like grilling, it's like I gotta stand out there. What's up on Meerkat Family? Hey, I don't know. I said, we got people on. I saw Kat, I was looking at Kathy's stream just uh, right before I came on. It was very nice. Good seeing her. Uh, of course, seeing Lydia every morning, among others. Okay, let's see how this, this little puppy is gonna work. Let's see if this onion will cooperate. This is for mincing. This is going to be in the cornmeal. Uh, so the cornmeal um, is two cups of cornmeal uh, with uh, lots and lots of tomatoes and uh, tomato paste uh, in it. So that's uh, the basis of that dish. Do you have a broiler? Uh, in the oven, I do. Uh, I don't have a... If, unless you're talking about a broiling dish, which is a broiling pan. I was going to put it in a baking dish uh, so I could baste it and flip it uh, halfway through as suggested. And if it's in the oven, I can see what's happening. Um, on the grill outside, in addition to having to be out there when I also will be in here cooking something else, uh, presents quite the challenge that I'm not really prepared to, to tackle if I can't, you know, watch it. Um, that's, that's the other problem with grilling. Uh, also, I was reading about should I have it the, the lid down, should I have the lid up, you know, if I do, does it, it, it must change the amount of time it takes, you know, when it says medium heat, I, you know, I'm not exactly sure what that means on the settings of my gas grill, uh, I don't want it too much, I don't want it too little, you know, it, it's calling for 10 pieces, I'm only cooking two, that must affect the time also, I assume, I don't know, too many variables. Uh, to make me nervous trying out there. Yes, in your oven. Uh, good. Um, so, yes, it's going to be on the baking dish in the oven at 450 uh, for 30 to 35 minutes is kind of its suggestion. Um, and uh, it's going to, uh, I'll be able to look at it and, and um, baste it and flip it one time. Flip it one time. One time. Give me one time. Hit me, baby, one more time. Yes, in your oven. Okay. Uh, oh, God, the weirdest thing. Um, you know what? This whole, like, me learning to cook business and me not knowing anything going in is, you know, kind of my calling card. However, between, you know, four years of practice and researching and so much help from you people, like, I can't even say, um, the, uh, I found myself in the odd situation of watching this show on Bravo, which I really recommend. Uh, it's called Recipe for Deception. Do you have a broiler in the lower drawer? Uh, I think you mean that, yeah, it's like a dish. It's, it's like metal and it has another thing on top with holes in it and it drops a thing on the bottom. Um, a broiling dish. Uh, yes, I know what you're talking about. No, we don't have one. Uh, we had one once and it died. Uh, I think it got used and hurt and in the whole Cliffy doesn't cook business. Uh, so uh, I think it I think it went away. I think it went away in a move. It got left behind with an oven in an old apartment or something. So that's the answer. Uh, I mean, there's a broil setting. Uh, but it did not say broil. The recipe did not say broil. It's, you know, it's, it's roast. Uh, I, th I thought of, um, like one, the final step on the chicken is to when it's almost ready, throw the onions, the onion rings, not these onions, the onion rings I cut earlier. Uh, my broiler is part of my oven now. Yeah, it's just the top part of it goes hot really down. No, do you have a broiler built into the lower drawer in your stove? No, the answer to that is no. The lower drawer is uh, a warming drawer, is what I got. Um, so the answer to that one is no. Um, the broil is just, you know, turns on super hot from the top on my stove. That's what I got. That is what I got. So, uh, in any case, I'm watching uh, Onions. 
Uh, peace, love, wrinkles. Thank you for the like. Uh, stream up too. Thank you for liking the restream. These are our chopped onions, our diced onions, and uh, wow, we don't really have much else to cut and prepare here. Surprise, surprise. And it's only 6.30. Uh, let me wash this off. I'm going to be right back. If you really feel like watching me, you can see me. I'm right over there. Um, so there's just a couple more things to set out, but nothing really to, to prep. Uh, so it, and the dish does not take very long at all. Um, Problem is, I need, you need to watch it every like 10, 15 minutes. And, you know, inside, outside, with the grill outside, um, not so great. I mean, if there's something that I can just, you know, set in there and go and walk away for an hour, know that at the end of the hour it'll be okay. You know, I could consider it in the future. That's part of this whole problem that, you know, cooking the world of food one thing that like a good 50% of the world, one of their national dishes, one of the things that in any given country they eat, and think about the country you're in now, um, is some form of grilled meats. Uh, so you have um, everything uh, in sort of East Africa that is better. Uh, I, I, I missed the, what that is better referring to. I'm thinking that we're still talking oven there. Um, yeah, but if I leave something in for like an hour or something and I know, come back and I know it's going to be okay, and meanwhile in here I can do stuff, you know, that I could handle. But anyway, grilled meats are kind of like a thing in every country. Oh, I was saying, um, bush meat is quite common in, in large, you know, most parts of Africa. And, you know, eat what you find out there. And um, thank you. Oh, Dad did the follow thing again. Thank you. Um, but uh, one of the things they eat is um, kind of a giant rat. I wish I'm going to use one of those or look for one of those. Uh, red palm oil, though, is the base of uh, just about any dish in West Africa. And red palm oil is your friend but don't use it too much because it is very high in saturated fat although it does have some health benefits allegedly according to internet people uh it used to be you couldn't find it first you could find it everywhere when the whole health benefits thing popped around we're not going to say who said that um and uh and then you couldn't because of the kind of problems with Palm oil in general, the way it's formed is very bad for the environment normally. There is red palm oil that you can get which is environmentally, you know, sound. Oh, do I see Justin there? Justin, my good man, how are you doing? Um, I'm trying to get this down to the bottom. Uh, however, now you can go to the, the Trader Joe's and Fresh Market and they have red palm oil. Imagine that. Uh, and you get some like this uh, organically grown and stuff like that. So. Uh, you can sleep a little better at night and still enjoy your red palm oil. This is the generic that I bought at the uh, global market some ages ago. You'll see that's a ton of it. The orange that you see here in the marinade for the chicken is the red palm oil. It has a distinct smell and color. Uh, if you've never experienced it before, it may be a little surprising. See, it's orange. Uh, so I'm going to try to approximate two tablespoons here. Uh, because it, it comes out like that, like a paste. Where is this? I can use you. Okay. We'll say you're one tablespoon. That's more than two tablespoons. You get back in there. But you see, it's very, it's very pasty. And then when it heats up, it just becomes this oil. Uh, that sort of melts and then becomes like a red, a very, you know, red, clear, very viscous oil. Uh, who are we looking at here? Uh, Dayar, hello, thank you for the uh, like there. Uh, yeah, supper's on, yay. Okay, I need to put this back and I need to get Bev before I die. Speaking of dye, your hands will get very orange handling red palm oil. And uh, the smell will not go away. 
unless you wash and scrub a lot because it is a very distinct smell. After I made the marinade and everything, I still, you know, I had to go scrub under my nails because I still smelled it. Smelled it. Okay, red palm oil, EC, right there. And now, water for Cliffy. Oh my god. Okay. Um, hibbity, 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 tomato paste. Okay, here's a weird thing. This recipe, this recipe called for two tablespoons of tomato paste. Uh, what do you do? Um, okay, uh, oh, hello. Um, let's see. Uh, Amadi. Okay, hi, welcome, so good to see you. Uh, today we are uh, learning to cook by cooking a different country in alphabetical order, working our way from Afghanistan to Zimbabwe through all 193 UN member states. This is week number 174 of 193. We're cooking Togo, the country in West Africa, which is located right, right there. Skinny little one right there. And we're cooking two dishes, uh, making a grilled Togo chicken, which is sitting here in the marinade, and we're doing a cornmeal dish, uh, which is called jenkume, uh, which is cornmeal uh, with red palm oil, and right now we're prepping our tomato paste. So that's what we're doing. So, uh, I'm getting two tablespoons of the tomato paste out here. I need to find lids. Uh, I almost bought them on eBay this morning. Uh, to, uh, you know, not lose the tomato paste. Okay, so we're looking for two tablespoons. One. And yes, I know the whole thing with the tubes and everything. I swear to you, I've looked in every grocery store I've been to and they don't see tubes of tomato paste anywhere. This must be, uh, what is it, you're in California, is it? Hector, I think, is the one who mentioned it. So tomato paste, two tablespoons of tomato paste. There, and now um, I'm gonna open a can of chopped tomatoes. Uh, I could have peeled and diced and whatever, but I'm not. It's that can of 15 ounce can of diced tomatoes, so that's what I bought. Don't shoot me. Hold on, I'm washing up. Opening a can, I know. Not, I try to do things from scratch as much as I can, but uh, not always when it comes to that. Sometimes a can is necessary. Alrighty. So uh, let me get Mr. Can Opener for a can o tomatoes. Uh, I made sure to get, you know, non flavored, non, you know, nothing with extra onion and garlic or whatever. Because all the flavor we're adding, we're going to add ourselves. This drawer is going to kill me someday. Okay. Uh, uh, Missouri? Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm Jad. Thank you for the reaching. Where are you from? If you, uh, if you care to say where you are, are watching from, uh, that would be really cool. Because I know we get people from all over the world watching. Which is always fun. The time differences always, you know, affect things. So I know, like, in Europe right now, our European viewers are up very late. Uh, when I've done the stream at odd times, like afternoon uh, or morning on one rare occasion, um, I got people from like Australia and Singapore, which is really nice. Uh, so we've got our can of diced tomatoes ready to go here. So now I think, uh, how much time is everything going to take? 15, uh, that's uh, 25, wow. Fifteen, twenty-five. Wow. Dinner. I don't want dinner to be too early. 
which is always an issue. No, not always an issue. Usually it's late. Usually dinner is late. Um, but I'm afraid to, for it to be early also. Um, so let me put everything I'm going to need over here by the stove, and then we're going to get going. Okay, we've got our red palm oil and our diced onions. And I'll move you too, so you can see. We've got our diced tomatoes. I am back, sorry, I had to make a phone call. Not a problem, Paul. Happens all the time. Uh, cornmeal, right there. Oh, who uses the phone to talk to people anymore? Um, and then our garlic, and then our sliced onions, and the chicken is for the other dish. So, uh, I guess it's time to move you to the other side. And I need to get my camera ready to take pictures. So, everybody move. Everybody move. Choo, 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 choo. Uh, let's put you here for now. So you can see your stove. Okay. So I'm going to get me a pot and a baking dish for the grilled uh, chicken. Or in this case, the roasted chicken. And we're gonna use a uh, ye old saucepan for the cornmeal. Oh, which reminds me. Um, uh, one more thing. I need to get the uh, chicken broth. It's four cups of chicken broth I need. And I used a bunch of chicken broth for our paella that I made on the weekend. And I hope I have enough left. If we don't, we're using water. It's as simple as that. So we've got chicken stock here. It's about half done. And then we got three more of little guys. Catch you all later, Anthony. Thank you so much. Uh, happy, what, St. Saint, uh, Saint David's Day, is it? Or it's not anymore on your, on your time zone anymore. But uh, happy to you. Okay. Uh, I need more water. Um because I'm uh, still dehydrated from my run. It was very sunny. I totally forgot what it's like to live up north with the snow. And yes, I do miss snow. I did not dislike snow, unlike other people. But we're in Florida now. It happens. Hi, Anne. Hello, Anne. How are you doing? Thank you for the like. Uh, okay, you. We are, um, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start preheating the oven now to 450 for that. Okay. And, uh, okay. So the red palm oil is going to be heated up. And it says on what? Medium high. Well, what I call medium high on this. I'm gonna put you a little closer for now. Watch your head. Okay, get you a little bit closer there. So uh, we're gonna get our red palm oil uh, going and you're gonna see in here how this red palm oil, which is very orange, uh, separates. So, uh, honestly, I, I am, uh, when we're in the letter C, it seems most of the uh, West African nations are all like piled up in the letter C. You have Cameroon, Cote d'Ivoire, um, Central African Republic, and Central Africa, obviously. Um, but uh, you know, you had B, Benin. Uh, so we had a lot of these countries like all together at one time, and it was just a whole uh, a Guinea, Guinea Bissau, and the G's. Um, got really used to the red palm oil. The first time I came to use it, uh, it called for it in a dish I did for Angola, uh, which was country number what six, something like that, and um, I didn't even know what it was, uh, and no one had it. And now, uh, I didn't get to use it then. I did afterwards, and it became like a standard thing, and then the husband got a little freaked out. 
by the smell and the taste for a while. He said, I don't like stuff with that. And then I started giving him stuff with that. And he goes, oh, that's really good. That doesn't have it in it, does it? And I go, yes, yes, it does. He goes, oh, well, I'm watching gardening. Sorry if I don't respond quick. Oh, no problem, Tammy. Uh, how is your garden? I see your lovely uh, Snapchats. Uh, I see your lovely garden. Uh, so um, you're seeing uh, the red palm oil start to separate here. So it's turning, you know, to liquid right there. Uh, maybe that's a better view. You better really get on your hands like nobody's business. And the smell is so... I don't know. I mean, you know, you can start out not liking it, but I came to really love it. And every time I have something with it, which is, you know, like when we went to the Animal, King Animal Kingdom in, um, in Disney, and I had something, I'm like, ooh, yes, red palm oil. That's a flavor that, you know, you just can't compare. Anthony, thank you for the like. Uh, no, not a problem. Uh, hello, hello, hello. Uh, Johan Austin, thank you for the uh, restream. So uh, we're heating up our red palm oil over here. Let me get a pen so I can keep track of where I am so I'm not such a ditz. Uh, we are here. So once that is going, we're gonna add the ginger, garlic, and onions and soften those for a bit. So uh, I wanna make sure this is hot enough before I stick it in. Uh, how are you? I am doing well, thank you very much. Uh, Luke, hey Luke, good seeing you again. So we've got our red palm oil heating up here. And uh, I just want to make sure it's hot enough. I've got it on, but for me and my stove and this nonstick sucker uh, is um, medium high. Question for you people who really know stuff. Uh, this, uh, as you, if you've been watching for a long time, you know, uh, um, somebody is called the other one Rocky because it, I, I warped it accidentally. The other two non-sticks I have, I warped. Um, our paya pan, I, the paya that I made on Saturday for the family, um, it didn't cook evenly because it was just warped in the middle, so the stuff didn't cook around the edges. Um, and I think that's, I don't know if that's something I created. I must have onions going in. After the onions. I think maybe when I was trying to season the pan when I first got it, I must have honked it up. Garlic going in. Garlic. Garlic, garlic. Go in. Let go. Thank you. And then the ginger goes in. That is being stubborn. Stubborn ginger. There's a Gilligan's Island joke in there somewhere. Okay, so we're going to cook this until it is softened and fragrant, and it's got, certainly got the fragrant part down already. Hello, hello. Is this still Luke I'm saying? Yes, Luke. Okay. Uh, but anyway, I'm thinking of um, getting that mount and doing the bird's eye view for uh, Periscope simultaneously. But I won't be able to see comments on it. And I think I can even mount it um, over here, on, over my head, so it can look down. Um, I know how well that's going to work. But it can definitely go over the fr refrigerator and you can see the prep. Um, who are we looking at? Uh, thank you very much for the follow, uh, Malik. Thank you. Or am I seeing that right? My eyes are very bad. Yes, I have my contacts in, um, which means I can't see far and I can't see close. The joy of multifocals. Um, so we're waiting for this to soften, and then once it has, then we're gonna add in the can of chopped tomatoes, which is sitting right there. Ta-da! 
and I'm still preheating the oven. You know what, while it does that, why don't you turn your pretty little heads this way, and we're going to unpack the marinated uh, chicken here. I, uh, instead of putting it in a bowl, I put it in a Ziploc bag uh, overnight. Uh, the marinade, uh, which I did not stream, the creation of the marinade last night, is um, salt, pepper, cayenne pepper, uh, garlic, uh, ginger, and red palm oil. That's why it's all orange. Oranges, oranges, smorges. Nothing rhymes with oranges. Okay. Ta-da. Okay, yeah. Now I gotta wash my hands again. Okay. I'm gonna put you down there. I gotta wash my hands. I swear, I was watching on um, Top Chef, and they had a uh, some challenge and da da, and the chicken, and then Tom Kalikio just come along and was like, "Oh, that's good," and like touching the chicken and walking away. I'm thinking, I, I, I know we must be seeing him wash his hands, not seeing him wash his hands like right next door. I'm just imagining all the contaminants. Okay, so this is definitely soft and fragrant now. And I think it's going to wind up, when it's done, I think it's going to end up sitting for a while until the husband gets home. Because I think this is one of those rare times that I'll be cooking and it'll be ready before. As opposed to an hour late, like it has been the last three of the last four times. So right now we are going to add the uh, tomato chopped tomatoes right here. Abracadabra. Tomatoes in uh, Togo. Again, we're cooking the food of Togo. We're going to go to Togo. I'll take Togo to go. And uh, we're going to bring that to... Uh, no, we're going to add the tomato paste next. Tomato paste, tomato paste, tomato, tomato. Get all that tomatoey goodness in there. Uh, if you are, you know, if you feel like it, uh, you know, feel free to uh, say where where you are uh, viewing from. I'm I'm really curious. I I watch my stats. Oh, by the way, everything that's at the blog is at cliffyland.com. Cliffyland.com, you will see, um, every Wednesday, you will see the blog post, which will show you pictures, links to the original recipes, uh, videos, these videos right here, in case there's something you missed you want to see, uh, at least for the last several months, anyway. Um, and you can see all the countries that you missed, uh, from Afghanistan to uh, what we did last week, which was Timor, Timor Lest, as we did last week, which is in... Um, in the Indonesian island chain. Uh, we did uh, two, three nights of that, uh, one of which was not technically working on Meerkat, which was a shame. Okay, so we're gonna bring that gentle si simmer for 15 minutes until a sauce forms. So a gentle simmer ye shall be. So I'm turning that down. We want a sauce to form. So here we go. Set timer for 15 minutes. So uh, in these 15 minutes, question and answer time, if you have any questions you'd like me to answer, or if you'd like to tell me where you're from uh, and such, that would be really cool too. It's time for me to go. See you back today, tomorrow. Uh, thank you, Danny. Thank you for popping by. And thank you for the translation on the yummy pizza. Is it pizza? No. I gotta remember. How do you say yummy pizza in Dutch? No, no, no. How do you say yummy pizza in Dutch? Checking my sources. Okay, I found... I, I remembered it last time, but I forgot. Come on, you can do it. I must know. Back, Carrie, you're back! Yay! 
Um, translation. Why are you not telling me? Oh, nuts. Dutch, Dutch, Dutch. Oh, for goodness sake. Ah, you know how. Okay. Um, we're going to need four cups of the chicken broth, chicken stock, later. And these are cornmeal is going to go in. But sorry about the white balance. Later. Like I said, in Togo, the uh, food is uh, not rice based, it's very corn based. So, hence the cornmeal being the thing. There was a, uh, if I would have cooked another night for Togo, there was another national dish uh, that I, because part of the challenge is trying not to do dishes that I've done already for na neighboring countries, even though they might have a slight variation. Like rice jollof uh, is sort of the national thing across all or most of West Africa. Um, and everyone says their version is the best. I wind up doing it for Liberia, so I kind of burned through it then. Um, I can't do it again. Uh, the dish that I could have done uh, is a uh, another spinach and peanut butter dish, which is kind of the thing. Spinach, peanut butter, and red palm oil. Those three things will cover most of Africa in some fashion or other. They'll be in some dish. You got those three things and you're halfway to your recipe. Um, so... Uh, that dish was kind of the same kind of deal. Uh, and, and the reason spinach is because spinach is usually substituted for whatever local green is actually had, eaten, that you can't find over here. There's also um, quite common throughout, you know, I keep finding it in African country after African country, and they have different names. One is fufu, which um, is a sort of like a mashed potato, but it'll be with like yams, like actual yams, not sweet potato. Or you can make it with sweet potatoes, which are not yams. Look it up. Um, or with uh, plantain sometimes, but basically mashed like sweet potato stuff. And it has to be the right texture. It's called fufu. It's, uh, it also, you know, even in Latin American countries, fufu is, is a thing. Um, and you're just used to it as if you're in the U.S. It's like the sweet potatoes you have for Thanksgiving. So that's kind of a variation on the on the same thing, um, but usually with red palm oil. The uh, the other dish and I, they have different names is hard. It's a uh, starch, and um, in this case, I think you bake it. Uh, but it's kind of a stiff porridge that you grab with your hands. You make an indentation in it to make a, basically an edible spoon that you use then to scoop up your stew or whatever it is that you're eating. Um, I kind of tried that one. I mean, not the spoon part, but the making the dish part. And uh, one time it didn't go too great. But uh, we'll see. We shall see. Okay, so we're working on waiting for this. Uh, still waiting on the preheating on the oven. I'm glad I started that when I did. Q&A time. Hit me, hit me, hit me. Um, mm, 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 mm. hope everyone's weekend went well. As we simmer, simmer down there. Um, uh, while we let that, I'm just, yeah, I'm, I can see you if I'm over here. I'm gonna clean. I'm gonna wash while we wait. So, less to do afterwards. Stew, or rather sauce happening behind me. Uh, Togo, the, uh, the religions in Togo, the majority, 51% of the population, uh, have the indigenous uh, beliefs, while there are about eh, 20, 25, 28% uh, Christian and some a little more than that Muslim. Uh, so it's a, a combination of people. Things are improving, which is good. It's a uh, beautiful countryside. Google Pictures. You know one thing? Um, my blog, cliffyland.com, right on right on my chest here. Like I said, it has pictures, links to the original recipes, videos. Uh, you can follow on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram or Pinterest. And now on YouTube, you can subscribe. Cliffy, you are scrolling. Are you scrolling? 
Am I scrolling? I don't know. Uh, Martina, I see the like in the restream. Um, thank you for the question. Because one time I didn't. Eh. Oh my goodness. Now I am. Um, doubly, thank you for the like in the restream. Good question. Uh, I think our new friends are from Kurdistan. Oh, I saw them on, um, if it's, a, it's, a, if it's the same individual or individuals, on uh, Lydia's stream earlier. Um, and they said they're from Kurdistan. I wanted to know. Uh, I know that's a tricky question. Um, is this Kurdistan, like what we'd call Iraqi Kurdistan? Or Kurdistan, Kurdish parts of Syria or Turkey? Or are we talking where? I mean, I'm assuming... If you say Kurdistan, you're talking about northern Iraq at this stage. I uh, hope I'm not offending anyone, saying anything wrong. Uh, and uh, did, 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 uh, Martina, 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 so good seeing you. Hello, hello, hello. Yes, and I am at the bottom of the, of, of the scroll. So I hope I've caught up. Uh, but yes, after I cook uh, Zimbabwe in July, uh, I promised a vacation to the husband. And uh, we still haven't... I, I know where I want to go. And I'm going to cope with being away. I'll cope with missing y'all. But uh, we'll be away. I want to do Puerto Rico. Uh, because I am Puerto Rican. And, uh, and I want to do some big Puerto Rican blowout. I, uh, I should think about inviting family from Puerto Rico for it. That would be nice. Yes, by Iraq, Sima said, not M.K. Sima. Uh, oh, good good to know. Well, you know, that's beautiful. I have seen some of the images from that part of the world in Kurdistan there. Uh, I forget what the uh, Kurdistan capital is. I forgot the name. But, oh my goodness, it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, my friend, my global traveling friend, who went to uh, every country without flying and got the Guinness World Record and all that. Um, uh, when he went, he was in there in... 20... Uh, let's see, 2009... 2000, 2010, I think it was 2010, when he went through. Which, you know, it matters what year he was, obviously. But, uh, you know, he went in and went through the northern border in Kurdistan and and, and um, loved it. It was just absolutely beautiful. And I saw all those pictures and all the people that he talked to, and it seemed like a very nice place. So, that. Uh, oh, when I cooked the food of Iraq, I did uh, some northern... I did. I recall doing something was specifically northern, because um, uh, there are different cuisines throughout Iraq, and you can find it all at cliffyland.com. You can see what I did. Uh, it's been a while, so I can't exactly remember what it was. Um, I did, you know, the I countries all together, so that was um, interesting. Doing Iraq, Iran, and then later Israel, so. Uh, and then Jordan and Kuwait not too long after. It's funny how some many countries, they're like bunched up alphabetically. Uh, just just because of the region they're in. And it just, uh, it's curious. Uh, is that a microwave above your hob? Yes, it is. Uh, thankfully, one I don't use very often now. So, there's that. Okay, I think we've cleaned up amazingly. Oh no, we're almost, almost done. Um, but yes, it's a microwave. It used to be the only thing where any cooking or heating up happened in this house until I started this whole shebang in 2012. So, I uh, did not know how to cook and not ever wander into a kitchen. I told the story how I burned water. Yeah, when I was in college, Cliffy has the best... Oh, Martina, thank you. I, again, I wish I could take credit for it. It's, it was, whoever, whoever lived here before, you know, redid the kitchen and had wonderful taste. So, when I came in, I said, wow, what a great kitchen. So much better than the ones in the, you know, 
places nearby. And uh, I said, oh, I'm never going to use it, but it'll be nice to wander through. Little did I know, world audience. No, I was saying before I started, back as I mean, in college, I, I could not, I couldn't boil water. I burned water. I came in one time from work, and I wanted to like make spaghetti or something. It's the only thing I could think of. And I took a pot of water, I filled it, I filled it with water, I set it to boil, and then I sat down and watched Guiding Light. And then I said, what's the smell? And I looked and the pot was on fire. Flames going up from the pot, the empty pot, the water had evaporated. Whatever oil that was in it was on fire. And, and it burned the lamp on the, on the hob and the plastic and it melted, it fell into the pot. So, um, and I started many fires accidentally in college in those years. My dinner one time was rice and toast. A friend of mine walked in and says, what are you having for dinner? And I said, this. He says, rice and toast? And I go, it's the only thing I had. And now, cooking around the world, who knew? So when I encounter people, they're like, oh, I could never, I never, blah, blah, blah. I'm thinking, well, don't say never, because you probably could, because I thought never. And then I did. Uh, I encountered this uh, super chef. Well, it's a long story. I found myself, at the end of a long story, sitting next to a super chef, a celebrity chef. I did not know he was a celebrity chef. And uh, I was just sort of saying, God, I wish I could cook, but I can't, I mean, I can't, I can't boil water. And he said, oh, just do it. Just go to YouTube, learn how to roast a chicken. He literally said that. And I went, well, okay, I'm going to try. I went home and I tried to. Um, not to mention almost killing yourself with the meat from the freezer. Martina knows the story. Martina knows the story. Thank you. Yes, that is... That's the 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 or the the the, the uh, Spider-Man Cliffy Land origin story, with uh, yes, almost dying. I um, I accidentally almost killed myself 30 years ago, not knowing food basic number 101. Freeze thaw, freeze thaw, freeze thaw. Indeed, yeah, that was that was not a good deal. That was a very bad deal. Uh, but you know, it uh, it was a good a good learning lesson since I sort of survived it. The stove is ready, and it is 7.07. Uh, it says 35 minutes to, 30 to 35 minutes to cook the, um, the chicken. The chicken which is sitting right here. This could be our grilled the Togo chicken, which won't be grilled, it's gonna be roasted. So, you are going into the oven for 30 to 35 minutes. It is 7.07. In you go. Set timer. 35 minutes. So let's see how that works. A. And then halfway through, I'm going to have to baste it and flip it. And we have another 49 seconds. Yay, on this. So we've managed to kill 15 minutes. Isn't that amazing? Uh, okay. We are going to remove from here one cup of this mixture. And that's going to be our dipping sauce. So, uh, hemina, hemina, hemina. One cup of this sauce over here is going to be our dipping sauce uh, for the end. So, here we go. Whew, that's, uh, that's a whole lot. That's what it says, that's what's gonna be. Are we sure about this? Yep, that's what it is. Unusual. So that's our dipping sauce. Yes, I know, thank you. You have done your job. Okay. So we've got one cup of this, which is gonna be our dipping sauce at the end. So let's uh, put that aside, and I gotta take a picture of you. Okie dokie. Dipping sauce there. Meanwhile, here we're going to add four cups of the chicken broth to our sauce here. So let's see how much we have left. I have to buy so much. Uh, 
it's so nice that you people remember my stories. I mean, the weird, the, the part that kind of, uh, of the origin story, that when I told the entire epic, you know, start to finish with certain, you know, details, uh, that stream, uh, did not save. That's way before the, I started saving automatically, which is a bummer. But, uh, who knows, maybe at some point later. I'll tell the entire epic tale again. I just don't like do re do reruns to bore people. So, okay, that's two cups there. So we're gonna need two more cups. This is chicken broth going into here. One, two, and we're looking for two more. This is, oh, okay, well, they're one cup apiece, so. You. And that's three, and we're looking for four. I believe this is so weird. This uh, is what um, Fresh Market sells. The itty bitty seem very inefficient. Well, I guess if you're only using one cup at a time. So we've got our chicken stock, and now we have only one little cup left. Rest goes in the garbage. Okay, so this is in there, and now we're going to whisk in the cornmeal. Which means we need to get our whisk. Gentle pressure. Let me put this away just one second. Let's see if we have meat. Uh, okay, cornmeal. This is the key. Cornmeal. And we're going to whisk you in. We're going to whisk you in. And I need a camera. I need three hands is what I need. Okay. Alrighty. Cornmeal going in, whisking slowly, which means this should go out. Three, go. We are listening to a yet another Togolese artist, but I can't go look at it right now. I went searching. The weird part is I look for Apple Music, I look for Togo, that's T-O-G-O, -O, and you will never guess what came up. Instead of music from Togo, which is in Africa, something else came up. Uh, it was very funny what came up. If you're a pop music fan, you may guess they thought I'd misspelled something. I was looking for Togo, T-O-G-O, -O, which happens to be in Africa. I did not search for the word Africa. But I just got a whole bunch of something else. Uh, whisking in cornmeal, uh, and we're gonna simmer that for about 10 minutes. 10 minutes, that's 7.23. Did anybody guess what I found on Apple Music instead of Music of Togo? Nobody wants to play. So basically I had to go like Google like musicians of from Togo and then look for their names instead. So that's basically the last step on this. Uh, to simmer that for 10 minutes, but it's gonna simmer for more than 10 minutes. Toto Africa, thank you, Derek, my good man. Hey, but I hadn't seen you. Thank you for, the, I missed you. Uh, good seeing you, my good man. Yes, Toto Africa, indeed. We felt the rains down in Africa. One of the dumbest songs ever. I mean, not that I don't like it, it's just really stupid. I do happen to like stupid songs, though. Uh, da, da, Derek, thank you for the like and the restream. Um, dipping sauce. So this, we got our dipping sauce over here. That's gonna sit right there. 
this is gonna basically simmer until dinner. Um, however, um, there are 28 minutes to go on the chicken. Uh, who do we have here? Do -do -do. Yusuf, thank you for the uh, like there. Uh, I, I, uh, okay, I got some something on the keyboard happening there. Uh, thank you for the like and the restream. Um, yes, we are making our denkome, which is a cornmeal dish uh, from Togo. In the stove is the grilled chicken, a one-hit wonder. No, actually, they had many hits. They had many, many hits. They won Album of the Year with Toto 4, with uh, Rosanna was Song of the Year from that same album. Uh, Africa was the one number one from there. But they had three other top tens from that, and they had uh, several other hits before and after. Uh, Hold the Line was their first one when they were kind of like a rock band. And then they had Georgie Porgy, which is a phenomenal, one of the best underrated songs. Uh, check it out. Georgie Porgy by Toto, with uh, vocals by Cheryl Lynn, best known for Got To Be Real. Incredible song. That was kind of a minor hit here. Uh, but but Hold the Line was their big one, and then uh, Toto 4 was the big with the, all the songs, and then they had some more afterwards. Um, Vicky Icky! Hello, Vicky Icky! Cliffy gotta go, looking I have to finish up outside. Uh, thank you, Tammy, thank you for coming by, you're lovely! Thank you, so good seeing you every day. Um, but Toto, yes, many bad. You know, one of the weird things about it, the lead singer um, Bobby something, um, I would say Bobby Kimball, who in that, in that period, um, he got uh, too big for his Brit britches, basically. He thought, I'm the big deal, I'm the reason, you know, we won all these records, and then he got 86 from the band. Yes, Rosanna, well, that was a very good song. It was written by, about Rosanna Arquette, in case you didn't know. The actress, Rosanna Arquette, from, um, sister of... Uh, Alexis Arquette and David Arquette and daughter of uh, Charlie Weaver from the um, Hollywood Squares uh, and star of, um, oh damn, what's the name of that thing? Uh, Desperately Seeking Susan, Rosanna Arquette. But in any case, Bobby Kimball, lead singer of Toto, um, at the time, you know, he was such a big deal and they booted him from the band. And but the thing is, Toto is a band, their album covers, they never had the band on the cover. So no one really knew who was in the band. You just had this logo. Um, just like Chicago and Yes and groups like that. And uh, so you didn't know who was in the band. So after you got booted from the band, they released a couple other albums which didn't do terribly well, minor hits. Uh, but then in what, like 87, 88, they had um, a string of, uh, I think it was even top 10 hits, which were quite good. Um, I can't remember the names, which is kind of the problem. But the problem is they tested them and everyone said, yes, I know that song. No, I don't know who does the them. And so the album uh, didn't work and they kind of, you know, faded away. But the replacement singer was the son of composer John Williams. So that's all your Toto trivia for the day. So you come here looking for food and you wind up with music trivia. Who knew? I'm a man of many talents. What more do you want to know? Since we're cooking Africa, we're talking about Toto's Africa. Meanwhile, that smell is really something. I need to bring this up to a boil. It's supposed to be simmering, but it's just barely bubbling. Now it's bubbling, okay. Okay, so what we're gonna have to do here, I need to decide. The uh, chicken is, thanks for sharing that. You're welcome, I, did, did, I had nothing else to say, so I just spewed, spewed all my like, you know, random trivia knowledge. I do well in trivia contests, as long as they don't involve sports. Then I'm done. On trivia crack, I hit sports. I'm like, okay, I'm I'm over. Uh, okay, I want to see the grilled chicken. I want to see how that is doing. How are things in Scotland, by the way? How are things in Guacamora? I know Guacamora isn't real, and I know it's supposed to be in Ireland. Cleaning, minor cleaning. Uh, okay, the deal is that our chicken is in the oven right now. Ah, yeah. Can you see? 
and it's roasting. I have to flip it at some point. Um, and uh, it's supposed to be kind of golden brown when it's done. It's been ma marinated overnight. That's you. Buck, 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 buck. Those are chicken thighs. Now it said to like use 10, and like I said, I didn't want to have that many leftovers. I mean, we just finally finished through the leftovers from our weekend party. Um, where I had uh, my paella party with the for mom, and uh, had mumu, I made mumu and mantu, and uh, something else. Oh yes, and the Swaziland avocado salad, uh, which you can find all those on cliffyland.com and see the videos and all that good stuff. However, uh, here's the deal. Help me out here. Uh, oh, thanks for the uh, like there, uh, Shan King, is it? Thank you. Um, now, the deal is, while I put this back on you, uh, you saw the grilled chicken. I got a postcard from Guacamora asking me how are things in Scotland. That's funny. I like that. So there is really a Guacamora somewhere. I know there's something that sounds like Guacamora. I didn't think there actually was a Guacamora. Anyway, um, okay, it says to, at, now, the grilled chicken we're talking about here. It says that the grilled chicken is to, uh, it's at 450, and it says it will cook in about 30 to 35 minutes, so that's what I'm doing. However, it says, or grilled, like on a grill. And I have a grill, I decided not to use it. As you can see, I'm not standing outside in the dark right now. If I was, then it would have definitely rained because it knows. Anytime I use the grill, it knows to rain. It's just kind of the way the world works. Uh, so I did not grill, therefore it is not raining. Um, however, it says that near the end, add in the sliced onions. What are you making? Um, Emil, hello. I'm making two dishes. One in the stove is the grilled Togo chicken, which uh, is in process right now. You can see it in there, I hope. Hello. Here you are. Surprise! Uh, which is uh, marinated in uh, salt, pepper, cayenne, pepper, uh, garlic, ginger, and red palm oil. That's being the key ingredient. And then over here we're making our jencome. D-J-E-N-K-O-U-M-E. Jencome. Uh, which is a cornmeal uh, dish, which is served sort of like in a mound. Um, and I wish I had tomatoes to serve on the side, but I don't. But there's a dipping sauce, which is made from it, which is sitting right here. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to do that. However, the grilled chicken, it's a, uh, oh, Emil? Oh, it's Emilio, oh, sorry. Emil? It's, oh, e oh, Emily. Is it, hold on, I'm very confused. I'm sorry, my eyes are really bad, and I really apologize. Emily, now I see, sorry, my bad. My bad, I apologize. Yolanda, thank you for the restream. Emma, Emma, Emily. You probably get that a lot. Women's names are more likely to wind up as song titles than men's names. And I'm convinced that this is a way to torture women with certain names. Because for the rest of their lives, people will be singing that song to them. And making them crazy. Uh, Yolanda, great. Um, not too late. Dinner in the oven even while watching. Hey, good, 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 good. So good seeing you. That's okay, okay, thank you. Um, I, I've made on here, I've made so many goofs in terms of, you know, who's, which, what, what. Any case, grilled onions. It's saying to near the end, add them. And if they'd be on the grill, they would be grilled onions. But they're not, they're in the stove. So I'm not exactly sure when to put in the onions. If I'm gonna put them in there, uh, Meerkat won't maintain following. Uh, oh, that's really weird. I know when you like click on someone's profile to like look at them and then you, you know, when it's the person you're watching, you accidentally hit unfollow and you have to hit follow again. That happens to me all the time. Um, uh, thank you for the like, Kawa. Thank you very much. So anyway, I don't know uh, if I should put the onions, the grilled the uh, onion slices uh, onto the chicken near the end uh, in the oven or if I should uh, sort of caramelize them in a pan and then just add them at the end because I think the idea is to get the onion flavor in cooked in with the chicken so uh, I'm thinking 
Uh, maybe in about 10 minutes I'll put the onions in. I'm not, I don't want them overcooked. I'm not really sure. Uh, How Are Things in Guacamole was a song about a fictional place on Broadway. Uh, Finian's Rainbow. Yes, indeed. Uh, I learned the song. Uh, it was on an album. Since we're killing time here. Uh, I, this is just really bad lighting for me. Um, the uh, There's a record that my dad got. Dad, hi, you remember this. Uh, well, you don't remember this. Uh, uh, there was a bonus thing you got for being an American Express card member. This is like in 1968, 69, um, uh, which uh, it was called Let Yourself Go, and it featured songs from uh, your, you know, the the sort of pop vocalists of the day. Thank you for the restream, Emily. Uh, pop vocalists of the day doing basically each other's songs or popular songs of the day. Said so Robert Goulet and Tony Bennett and Steve Lawrence and Barbara Streisand and Nidhi Gourmet and Julie Andrews doing How Are Things in Guacamora. And I had it and I played it and I loved it and I played it to death and I loved that whole album so much. And then, you know, decades later I wanted to go back and find it and I went through my parents' house and I couldn't find the record anywhere. And I went looking online and, you know, it's like let yourself go album blah 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 and I found that like some person in the universe had it somewhere in a garage sale and just had a list of the things that they once upon a time had and had sold and that's as close as I got and I kept searching for years and then I finally found a website where people were discussing things and I posted I would do anything to find a copy of this just to have it on my then I said on my iPod uh, because I missed this the songs or most of the songs aren't on any other recording and I remember them and you can't find them anywhere. And uh, so I put that on a post back in 2006. And then like two years ago, so that's like 2014, I get an email that I hate that song you just sang. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Um, and, uh, but uh, whatchamadougal, I love this so much. And so I get an email from a random stranger saying, I found your post on the internet on that site that you were looking for this album. I happened to found one at a garage sale. I digitized it. Would you like a copy? What's your email address? And I just Dropbox it to me and now I have it. It's crazy. The internet sometimes can be an amazing place. Sometimes it can be a scary place. I don't think I need the whisk anymore. I should just let that sit. But... Are things in black I'm sorry. But it had, um... Boy. The songs on there but they're like other people oh frank sinatra was on there that was i love that album so you can see the uh cornmeal starting to absorb the uh the the liquid and we have 15 minutes to go which means i'm going to flip the chicken now i don't know how i'm going to do that and you're watching at the same time that's going to be a tricky operation because I don't have a GoPro mounted on my head, which would be sort of like a prerequisite. I love food from different countries. Well, you came to the right place. We've cooked 174, well, 73 already. This is 174 of them. So you can find uh, everything at cliffyland.com. Go there, hit enter, subscribe, follow on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Pinterest, on now on YouTube. And you can see it. The power of the World Wide Web, friends, uh, friends together, and idiots to the fore. Hey, you got that, buddy. Thank you, Derek. It's so really, I just look forward to talking to you all the time. Hello, honey. Hi there. I'm glad you're home. It's smoky. What's going on? Good. Okay, we're going to flip our chicken. It's chicken flipping time. You didn't close the windows? No, it's a little smoky. You say, I didn't close the windows? I did close the windows. It's warm. Well, well, no, I didn't, I don't know, it's just smoky. That's what I'm trying to get at. Um, okay, here, here we go. With one hand, looking over my shoulder, we're going to attempt the operation. Flip them? That's why it's smoky. Yes. Oh, something ran over? Oh, my goodness, yes. Well, ran over? What do you mean ran over? Oh, I thought I saw something on the No, no, no. The... Seven. Okay. We flipped them. Hi, Pete, Ta-da! Please say hi to the husband. He, uh, Derek says hi. Hi, Derek. Okay. I'm getting up. I'm getting up. Urgh! That's what happens when you run 10 miles. 
Okay, so I'm going to have to put in the, um, the onions. I think uh, I'm going to wind up sticking them in in three minutes. So I'll give them ten minutes on the chicken. I hope that's the right choice. I hope that's the right choice. Um, I'm just going to take a... I don't know what to do. How am I going to take a picture of that? We'll go figure it out later. In any case, um, chicken, chicken me, and we're going to get our plates ready for dinner. Charming face. You have a charming face? Someone says charming face. Thank you. If that's about me, thank you. It's about him, he said thank you. Who's that emoji? Mm. That one. Um, here, like, I wonder if I can do that. I'm curious. Where is it? Where is it? It's in here somewhere. Here we go. Does it, does it flip my icon? I didn't see it. I don't think I can do it myself. I have to do it like this. Let's see how that works. Oh, when you stood up. <laughs> okay. Err. Okay. Um, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I'm getting plates. Uh, plates are here, 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 here. Let's see. Get your different view. You can see everything at the same time. Okay. Plates. It is so smoky. <laughs> okay, it's not that smoky. I'm kidding. Yeah. Now I'm just scared of cowboy. Oh no, I'm scared of kitty. Don't scare the kitty. Okay, the premise is e. Uh, ramekins. So we. Mm. Did we use the other ramekins? Ah, that must be it. Uh, I'm gonna use these. To wash them out? No, no, no. I got others. These little um, Asian sauce bowls. Uh -huh. Will do. I don't know how big the mound should be. That's that's probably big enough. Yeah, that should be big enough. So that's gonna go this into here, into mounds, and there. And then, oh, so this recipe is from this Ethnic Foods Are Us, which, uh, you know, traditional Togolese recipes in there. It's really hard finding French African recipes because if they're out there, they're in French websites. What is it you want from the onions? The flavor of the onions, which need to go onto the chicken. Like now. N-O-W now. Okay, so. Uh, I'm not going to show you this. Just trust me. I'm going to put these in. I just, I, I, I only have two hands. Yeah. I need to not burn my hands as I try to stick the onions uh, or I could take it out and put it on. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. This is definitely not Togolese. At least it doesn't sound Togolese. It sounds like salsa, yes. Ah! Hot right, smoke. Okay. Onions. On camera. Hope you're seeing this. Okay. Ah. Back in the oven. Fast, fast, fast. Quick like a bunny. I hope that worked. Okay. Supposedly for the last 10 minutes, that's gonna go. This is still going. Uh, how are we doing here? And there's gonna be a sauce on the side. This has absorbed most of the water. Not enough of it. But there's supposed to be big chunks of, um, it sure does look good. Oh, good. I um, hope it tastes good. You know what, speaking of tasting, Cliffy never tastes, or has the problem with not tasting. I don't know if I'm that way. Um, so I should taste that sucker. Yes, I should. 
Yes, I should. Not quite ready, but we're gonna taste it anyway. This is our Junkome. All, all orangey and tomatoey and corny. I'm surprised this doesn't have peanuts. You make me yelly. <laughs> is that Balboa you're using? Balboa. Oh, ha, ha, ha. No. The Balboa is a white interior. That, um... This really needs salt. Like in a huge way. Like in a massively huge way. Desperately needs salt. My goodness, I cannot have any salt. Jelly! Yes, I get it. Jelly. <clears throat> and not, not, I don't think you're ready for this jelly jelly. Uh, so we've got uh, salt in it, and you know what? I'm gonna add some pepper, too. It's weird. Some some of these dishes just don't ever just. And maybe they assume that you should season, or maybe they just don't season it. And like uh, the um, uh, the, the uh, ocean countries, Oceania countries, the recipes like will not mention salt or pepper at all. And then I have it, and I go, it's really bland. And they go, yeah, because they don't use salt and pepper. And I go, well, that's really kind of a problem. So, um, you know what? I could even improvise him further on that. Because it needs it. I had no flavor. Smells lovely. Well, definitely get the red palm oil smell. You got that, you got that down. But right now I'm waiting for the texture. It's absorbed most of the water at this point. We have six more minutes on the chicken. Julie, thank you for your like. Um, oh, that's not a problem. My typing is all messed up anyway. Bella, thank you for the like in the restream. Bella Luna. That made it better. I've, now I'm starting to get the, the, the red palm oil taste coming in now. But I'm going to do one more thing. It's not on the menu, but um, I'm going to add some umami. It's not, not listed as an ingredient. However, I'm just going to add a little MSG to the dish for a little umami. A little extra something. I just joined, what are you cooking? Uh, right now I am cooking, um, this is the Jenkome, which is from Togo, the West African nation of Togo, which is next to Benin and Ghana, and now it's too hot. Um, and uh, Burkina Faso, and it's a cornmeal based dish, which is now sticking to the bottom of the pan, um, because I've waited too long, turning it down. Uh, and in the kitchen, in the stove, we have uh, a Togolese, uh, sorry, yes, a Togolese grilled chicken. Are you going to do something like the? Already did the Netherlands under N. You can check everything out at cliffyland.com. Uh, I did one dish which I did poorly, um, and then I did a, so the Indonesian stuff in the Netherlands. Uh, being such an influence, I did a satay, which was out of this world, one of the best things ever. I need to find more candle nuts and do that again. But hello, Holland. Danny's from Holland. I have another Facebook friend who um, I'm quite close with who is in the Netherlands as well. So I'm turning this down because now it's starting to, you know, solidify on the bottom, which is kind of not what I want. Bummer. Oh, you can just check it out. You can see it's all up there. And um, when I finish with Zimbabwe and I take a vacation and or do Puerto Rico, um, and then I will do a collection of uh, non-UN member state territories, which I will pick 
you know, arbitrarily, shall we say. Um, then uh, I'm going to do a three-step continuation, which is going to start from A all over again. So you can see from Afghanistan, and who knows, it'll be four years that I'll finish that. But I'm going to be doing those countries only one night a week instead of three. Uh, the second night, uh, I will, if I decide to do a second night, will be the 50 states. And the third night will be a random cuisine from the world. So I'll focus on maybe southern India or Sichuan or northern Italy or something like that. And it won't be alphabetical. What do you make from the Netherlands? Um, I, where are you from? I'm Puerto Rican. We're in Florida. Um, which, in, either way, that's American. Um, so that's where I'm from. We're in Jupiter, Florida, which is about two hours north of Miami, about an hour north of Fort Lauderdale, about half an hour north of West Palm Beach, known for its lighthouse and Burt Reynolds and various other celebrities. So, um, that's what we're making. That's where we are. Um, but when I do phase two, uh, like it'll be definitely one night a week going around the world again on Periscope and on Meerkat. And then second potential night, 50 states. And third potential night, random cuisine. So instead of having to wait like three years to see the Netherlands again, uh, I could decide to do a Dutch dish, like, you know, just because. So what did I make? Um, one thing I made was a potato thing that I did really messed it up badly and I was very embarrassed. Um, and the other one I did the peanut saute, which is very, very good. That was out of this world. Super spectacular good. Uh, but yeah, the Dutch, the traditional, oh, and I did something else with apples, I think. I can't remember, it's been a while. Um, Julie, so yes, you're welcome, Julie. I hope that helps, answers your question, and maybe it gives you something to look forward to here. We've got one minute. One minute! A banana, we're gonna have to eat this banana. It's decided to peel itself. Oh dear. It just decided to peel itself. Okay. So, uh, hey, but how about a hoop? We're gonna start putting this in ramekins now. You make. Tete Bixum. You made it, yeah, I probably did. Uh, like I said, my memory, like when it's, when the week is over. Usually, unless it's something like really super great or really super awful, I don't remember what it is that I made, and neither does he. I but I, about that. But those peanut satay, that was out of this world good. Fun to watch someone cook because I don't like to cook. Well, I did, I couldn't, I mean, my whole thing is I didn't cook at all. Disfrutar de tu cena, mi hermano. A ver, we will try. Muchísimas gracias, nene. Many thanks, my good man. Okay, so ramekin it and mound and our chicken is ready, off. If I had tomatoes, fresh tomatoes, uh, who is eating all this meal? Uh, just me and my husband, that's all. Just dinner for two. So is it gonna be less leftovers than I thought, which is good. I heard you. Insistent little oven, isn't it? So that's 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 who's eating. Ah, ah, ah. Stop beeping. Enough with the beeping. I heard you the first time. Clear off. It's off. Off. Stop. Timer. How do I timer off? There. Now it can shut up. Okay. did not come out very pretty. Second mound. One of the, uh, the first recipe I found for this online, it said to use two cups of tomato paste. Of tomato paste, mind you. That did not sound right. It's like 1.45 in the night, so yeah, I'm not eating anything. Yeah, I can imagine. TNT to me. Okay, so uh, dipping sauce. So we got our, this is gonna be our dipping sauce over, I guess I need something else to scoop it with. Take 
bacon looks good, the onions don't look like they did anything. Well, I guess we need knives, don't we? Uh, you might guess. You don't want one? Uh, I could probably do without one. <clears throat> so, dipping sauce. Behind you. This is uh, made from part of what started out the, uh, the corn dish here. If I had fresh tomatoes, I'd put some fresh diced tomatoes on the side also. That's too big a ramekin. I'm starting over. Starting over. Okay, FedEx. FedEx? What, FedEx to you? Uh, Billy, uh, is that Billy Yo-Yo? Thank you for the uh, like there. Oh, I am Florida Cape Coral. As your neighbor, could I invite myself? <laughs> yeah, well, make plan. Get here to Jupiter, we'll see. Where's Cape Coral? Isn't that uh, over by Fort Myers? <coughs> I think that's where it is. Okay, I'm making a smaller dipping sauce, ramekins, because that other seemed a little too big. Messy. I am not, and, and plating is, is my least skill. Leftovers, indeed. Well, I don't think there'll be too many, hun. Okay, uh... Mm. Dipping sauce number one. I don't, I looked up this artist from Togo and these names came up and this one came in and I put it in Apple Music and this seems like Salsero Extraordinaire. This seems 100% Latin American and not Togolese. Not, but that there's anything wrong with not that there's anything wrong with that. I just don't think it's the right country for the music, but only one night of Togo. Yes, it is on the other side, yes. Uh, I think we stayed there um, last year when we went to the um, uh, Edison and, uh, and, and Ford estate in Fort Myers. I think we stayed in Cape Coral. Chicken! I gotta get the chicken. That would be handy, wouldn't it? It's been in the oven a little longer. Uh, I hope those onions are... Yes, Cape Coral being close to Fort Myers. Yes, indeed, that is that is where we stayed. We had a big discussion about at the restaurant. Like, oh, which are we in? I said, my GPS says we're in Cape Coral. Ah, my face! Grilled chicken, or broiled chicken. Hot burning hands. That is beautiful, yay. I gotta put this down and not burn myself. Thank goodness for Granite countertops. The estate, yes, the estate is beautiful. Uh, so, uh, here we go. Chicken. Eh! Caray. It's not wanting to... There we go, come on. Lift and step, oh, come on, you can do it. Shenanigans. Come on. There we go. And some, get the onions in the sauce. Some onions on top. There. I'll show you a close up in a minute. Give me a second. Hope you can see. Nom 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 nom. Nom 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 nom. Okay, a little closer look over here. Okay, meanwhile, number two. Oh my god, we're actually eating on time. This has not happened recently. Fed TNT, FedEx leftovers, Derek. Sent to exp <laughs> Oh, you know, I think our na we're trying to figure out how to get in contact with our neighbor to pay her back for lending us her portable heater, outdoor heater for pay her back in leftovers. But I don't have really many leftovers tonight. She wanted Thai food and she didn't know I was doing my cooking thing until after I'd finished the Thai food. So you cook, does your husband clean? Yeah, we do, we clean together. We team up to clean up. Uh, and that one's a little too big. You need to be pretty. Okay. Yeah, ba -doo. Yeah, so we clean up together after dinner. Since I've been busy yakking and catch up that way. Meanwhile, clean up the plate. 
this uh, red palm oil really it makes everything very uh, smell lovely, but it gets super greasy. It's like this it's this consistency you can't ever get out. This thin layer of, of red palm oil is always on everything. Okay, you're number one. Eh. Perfectionist strikes again. Okay. Uh, bar we thank you for the like. Bar we thank you for the restream. I don't think they FedEx food. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be number one. You're number two. You're a little prettier. Get over there. Okay. And I need to take a picture for the blog. The blog is at cliffyland.com. That's where you're gonna find it. And time to take a picture. And then we gotta eat. And uh, one, two, three. And trying to get that shadow. Say Togo, Togo. Okay, so a uh, great stream. Thank you so much for looking forward to the next one. Thank you so much, Derek. Thank you for coming. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Lydia. Thank you, Derek. Uh, Kenneth, if you're still here. Uh, uh, Emily, thank you, everyone. This is our Togolese grilled chicken with our jinkome, our cornmeal, with the dipping sauce. So that is the food of Togo. Uh, country number 173 in the books. When you're going to stream when you're eating, no, 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 no. We, then, then we just eat. Um, but thanks for asking. Uh, Julie, I think Cliff and Watch get up at 4 a.m. So night night, yeah, I enjoyed dinner. Thank you so much for coming by. Um, next stream will be next week. We're cooking, going back to the uh, Pacific. Uh, thank you, Hector. Uh, thank you, Lydia. Um, for Tonga, T-O-N-G-A, Tonga, out in the Pacific. So more Oceania food. We haven't had it since, uh, I want to say Palau. So it's been a while. So check back in. Uh, or maybe Papua New Guinea. In any case, it's been a while. Check it in next week. Um, maybe Friday, maybe Sunday, definitely Tuesday. So check, and also tomorrow the blog at cliffyland.com. Uh, follow on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, uh, YouTube. Subscribe on my YouTube channel. That would be groovy. You can catch up on the videos you miss. See pictures, links, all the videos. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Gotta eat. Food's getting cold. Love you. Bye. Mm.